Hi, and welcome to another episode of Cast Support, the show where we answer all of your brewing-related questions, and otherwise, if today's show is anything to go about. Today's show is all about gluten, okay? And our question comes from the UK, but before we actually get into what the question is, I'd like to say, at the Castle Malting Support team, we get a lot of questions related to gluten, uh, gluten-free brewing, buckwheat, all of these things. So hopefully I can just take all of that information and just sum it up into one nice little episode and uh, hopefully that answers everyone's questions. But anyway, let's kick started. What's the question? I work for a lager brewery in the UK and we are looking into producing a 100% gluten-free beer from gluten-free malt. Is your buckwheat malt certified as gluten-free? Also, how is it to brew with? Would I be able to do 100% buckwheat or would I have a problem lautering it? Okay, so before we get into the dynamics of actually brewing with buckwheat, let's kickstart this off and let's just have a look at, like, what is gluten, you know? So, gluten is a combination of two different proteins. And these proteins come together and they've become very popular due to the fact that they form chains and they can, you know, keep in gas bubbles into things like bread. I mean, there, there's a whole world of other applications there, but I mean, this is pretty much the most, the most commonly known one. So, um, and obviously gluten's become very popular for this. Also, gluten tastes really good. You know, there are places in, uh, in the Far East where they actually use, they work the gluten out of the flour and they use pure gluten to create meat substitutes. And uh, I mean, I've had it, it tastes pretty good. So that's what gluten is, okay, as far as we're concerned. Gluten is found in cereal crops, okay? Now it's, it's cereal crops from a particular family, like for instance, uh, wheat, barley, um, rye, einkorn, spelt, all of those products all contain what we call true gluten. Now, uh, maize and rice, they're also grasses, and we also consider them cereal crops. They do contain proteins that act sort of like gluten, but it's not true gluten, so uh, we don't have to worry about that. But so that's what gluten is. And uh, the reason gluten has actually hit the headlines over the past couple of decades is because there are certain people who are intolerant to it, especially people with celiac disease. Now, there's a lot of reasons for that. Uh, if you ask me, Pretty much everyone is just eating way too many processed foods. Uh, we didn't have this problem, you know, a century or more ago. Uh, it's only with the advent of processed foods, uh, adding additives, you know, I mean, even gluten, uh, you can have too much of a good thing. And, uh, you know, gluten is no exception. Okay, now the other aspect about gluten is, uh, you know, I mean, we, we know now that it's what it is, it's a protein, cereal crops, but why is it there? The gluten is there for the purpose of feeding the young plant while it is germinating within the, uh, within the caryopsis, that's the actual correct name for a grain, is a caryopsis. It's there to feed the caryopsis whilst it's germinating. Now, how does this relate to beer? Well, the thing is, if you understand the process of malting, and you understand the process of brewing, you know, it, uh, it, you will see that making a Gluten-free beer is um, <laughs> a bit of a misnomer, but anyway, let's let's any case go through with it. So let, let's look at, let's look at the next part. Okay, so buckwheat is by far the most well-known of all the brewing malts, which are at least gluten-free. But um, the word buckwheat is a little misleading. Uh, buckwheat is not a reference into what it is; it's a reference to how it's used. You see, buckwheat is actually a seed because it is not, uh, it's not a cereal. Uh, buckwheat is actually a seed, but this seed contains an unusually high amount of carbohydrates and uh, hence the name buckwheat. But in reality, it's actually a, a shrub, small plant, I don't know, but it's, it's, it's definitely not a grass. So, um, and it contains zero gluten. <laughs> And the other part of the question, you know, is your malt certified as gluten-free? Well, the thing is, if you know how a maltery works, you'll realize that we don't need to certify our buckwheat as gluten-free. Because A, 
Buckwheat doesn't contain any gluten, and B, we're a maltery. We're not a flour mill, okay? And uh, the only way that uh, people usually find that there's cross-contamination, but that's only when you actually break the seed open. Remember, in a maltery, we take carry up size seeds, whatever it is, and we malt it. The seeds are still whole, as far as buckwheat is concerned, and we bag it and we ship it to the brewery. There's no, the, the inside of the, of the, either the caryopsis or the seed is not exposed, so there's no chance of cross-contamination at all from gluten. So uh, I hope that at least answers one part of the question. <laughs> What is gluten-free? Well, if you're in the United States, gluten has been identified, categorized rather, as generally safe to consume, you know? And uh, the labeling of having, actually having gluten on it is only if you've actually specifically added gluten to the product, you know? If it's there by incident, like in the case of wheat flour or whatever, then it's not necessary to actually specify it, and you can specify it uh, but it, it's totally voluntary, you know? Whereas in the European Union and in Canada, if your product contains less than 20 ppm of gluten, it can be termed gluten-free. Now, that 20 ppm, that's actually a very important number. And we'll see why in a, in a minute. But, uh, so just, just keep that in your head. Now let's talk about beer and gluten. I mean, that's, that's, that's why we made the show, right? Anyway, so beer and gluten. So let's take a stock standard beer. Uh, it has five to 7% alcohol. It uh, is 100% malt. This is the sort of vibe we're talking about. Now that beer, okay, it's, I mean, that beer contains 30 ppms at most of gluten, okay? 30 parts per million of gluten. So, I mean, to make that at least legally um, gluten-free would require swapping out maybe 30% of your base malt, replacing it with buckwheat. There you go. Certified gluten-free beer because it is under 20 ppm. While I was doing research for this, I looked all over and I, I asked the question, how many uh, milligrams of gluten can somebody consume before they start noticing an ill effect, even those who are hypersensitive. And I came across values, uh, pretty much most of them were around the sort of 600 milligram mark, but I even found a couple of them that said as low as 10. I thought, well, I mean, it's not LSD, it's gluten, give me a break. But anyway, so in, case, in the interest of science and being as unbiased as possible, let's, let's go halfway between those, okay? Let's take the minimum, 10, and the maximum, let's call it 600 uh, milligrams, and let's cut it right halfway. So let's say 300 milligrams it takes you to, uh, to have an adverse reaction from, uh, from gluten consumption, okay? Now if you convert milligrams, okay, to ppm, Okay, so let's break it down. One ppm is equal to one part per million, or one in a million. One liter is equal to 1,000 milliliters, and one gram is equal to 1,000 milligrams. Stay with me. Water density is measured as one gram water per one milliliter water, because, you know, metric is legit. Therefore, ppms per liter would be one million parts of one liter, which simply means that PPM is milligrams per liter. And therefore, 30 milligrams of gluten are present in one liter of beer. What this means is that you can consume 10 liters of beer without ever having an adverse reaction. And I, let's just be honest, at 10 liters, you'd be drunk way before you actually had any sort of adverse reaction to, uh, gluten consumption, right? Now, this shouldn't really come to, as a shock to you because of how the malting and brewing process works. I mean, when we malt it, we activate the seed. The seed consumes some of the gluten. Then we pack it and we send it to the breweries. What the breweries do is they mash it and this resulting liquid, they boil. Now, they, in, when you, after you've boiled uh, beer, 
there's hot break, which is a whole bunch of different proteins, but eventually they denature, they clump, and then they settle to the bottom and we siphon the liquid off. So even though barley has a huge amount of, uh, of, of gluten in it, what ends up in the beer is, you know, next to nothing. But okay, so let's actually get to the crux of the question, and that is, how do I brew a gluten-free beer? So if we're not looking at the legal sort of standpoint of uh, 20 ppm or less, let's look at it from a scientific standpoint and a hypochondriac consumer standpoint of literally zero gluten, okay? How are you gonna do that? Well, you could opt to malt corn. I mean, it's not just buckwheat out there. You could opt to malt corn. Um, I mean, if you don't know, Casa Malting is a specialty malt company. I mean, we've done this. Uh, it's a bit of a pain in the ass, but I mean, I mean, we can do it. But uh, we noticed that the resulting beer really, really, really wasn't great. So if you want to create a beer that is 100% gluten-free and still tastes like a taste and for intents and purposes, uh, the experience is like a beer, you only have one option really, and that is to go for buckwheat, okay? Now, for buckwheat, this is how your recipe is going to go. Okay, so first step is to have a look at buckwheat malt as a brewing ingredient. First step is diastatic power. Saying it's very low is being seriously generous. Honestly, it's not even worth putting the amount of diastatic power on the bag. That's how low it is. Secondly, law terrain is going to be an issue. There are no husks, so you're going to have to use some or another lautering aid. And because you're brewing pure buckwheat, there are no specialty malts available, uh, as in caramels, roasts, all of that currently. So you're going to have to work with hops and yeasts primarily. That said, let's have a look at a model recipe for 100% buckwheat beer. You'd need at least 25 kilograms of castle buckwheat malt per hectoliter, one and a half kilograms of rice husks, or similar lautering aid. Uh, this is at the lower end of the scale. You might want to add a bit more. And uh, finally, you're going to need to add artificial amylase enzymes because, you know, it just isn't going to cut it buckwheat alone due to the diastatic power that it has. But all in all, if you add these ingredients together and you use some creativity in terms of yeast and hops and uh, maybe even spices if you're going Belgian, you should be able to do something like this no problem and your resulting beer would be absolutely great. So um, yeah, try it out and let us know how it went. So there you have it, that's how you put together a gluten-free beer recipe using our buckwheat. Hope it answers your question. Thank you so much for watching Castle Support. See you next time. Have a good one. Cheers.